assorted bunch. My wife Sarah and my three kids are members here. This morning, we're about to share a meal that's for everyone. You're all invited. If you've forgotten to grab the elements, just raise your hands. I've got some guys coming down there to give them to you. When I was a boy, I remember at the front of our sanctuary, there was this big wooden table. And it said, do this in remembrance of me. And so when we share in this meal, we want to remember Jesus. And I want to draw your attention to a particular story of Jesus from Mark chapter 2. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. He preached the word to them. As the man came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get into Jesus because of the huge crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it. And then they lowered the man on the mat that he was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming! Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in their spirit what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or, Get up. Take your mat and go home. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And he got up, and he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. that we are about to eat here represents Jesus' body and his cleansing blood. The blood that forgives our sins and his broken body that was healed. Now, clean blood might mean something different to my family than it does to many of yours. Nearly four years ago, we were told that my wife Sarah has a type of blood cancer. The doctors told us that it's inoperable and incurable. Now, there's a whole lot of story in between that moment and what happened four weeks ago, but they don't give you so much time here. Now, you see, somewhere in that gap of time, I believe that Jesus told me that he's going to heal my wife. He has the power to cleanse blood. Four weeks ago, Sarah went in for a procedure that I believe will be the catalyst for her eventual healing. And it came in the form of a sandwich-sized bag of T-cells that they put directly into her bloodstream to clean her blood. When I looked at the name tag of the man who brought in the T-cells, it said Jesus. Sarah saw it too, and she looked and she asked him, what's your name? I expected him to say Jesus. It's not what he said. He said, my name is Jesus. If you've come to this table and you don't believe that Jesus' blood has the power to forgive your sins and remove them as far as the east is from the west, well, Jesus has something to tell you. Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk. Let's pray. Jesus, we remember you today. In this moment, when we take part in this holy meal, we remember that you are the God who can heal, 
and more importantly, you are the God whose blood forgives our sins. So as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we raise a glass to you, King Jesus, King of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen.